Hi, I'm Roshni. I'm the CEO and founder of Tickle Media. Tickle Media is the largest women publisher across Southeast Asia. We're in nine different countries and we publish content in 13 languages. Uh, we're most well known for our parenting website, theasianparent.com. So I started the company when I was just 25 years old, living in a one bedroom apartment in New York City. So a babysitter over the weekend and a journalist at, during my normal nine to five office hour jobs. And one day I came home and I said, I'm done. I don't want to work for someone. I want to run my own thing. So at that point, I quit my job and I went to godaddy.com and I bought a URL. And being an Asian woman uh, who was 25 years old, I was getting a lot of pressure from my family to start a family. So I said, before I start a family, I want to understand this whole domain. And so I created theasianparent.com. Before I knew it, it became a pretty big media company with 120 employees across Southeast Asia. We've raised eight million in funding, and um, this is just the beginning for us. So when I first started the company, I absolutely did not think of it as a company. I didn't think I would have more than a thousand or two thousand readers at max. I remember the first day that we'd, when we hit one million users, which was in 2013, uh, I was stunned and I said, we've crossed 1 million. And then when we hit 10 million, it was like, oh my God, we closed a really big contract with an FMCG company in Singapore and they refused to pay me to my personal bank account. So <laughs> that's when I was like, oh, I have to go and register the business. All right. And, and that was the birth of Tickle Media. But for the first three years, uh, I really didn't have much idea of how to run a business or, or just the basic fundamentals of running a business. The first few bank account, uh, what would you call them? Uh, financial statements I would get, I would just open it up and say, oh, 3,000 in our bank account, tear it up and throw it away. I had no idea I had to compile all of it for to do my accounts at the end of the year. I didn't take a salary for the first three years. And so I remember what it was like to write myself a $3,000 check three years later and I was over the moon. I realized that, I, hey, I needed to get some kind of income in order to be able to afford more writers to create better content. So I called up a number of FMCG companies in Singapore. And one of the companies said, oh, this sounds really interesting. Why don't you come down and pitch to us in person next week? So I didn't have the guts to tell her that I was living in New York and I was doing a long distance call. So she said, send me your media kit and uh, we'll set up a meeting next Wednesday. And I had no idea what a media kit or a rate card was because I had never been in sales. I was a journalist. So I, I decided to call up the biggest Western parenting platform. And I said that I was a manicurist who wanted to open up a new uh, boutiques all across Asia and could they send me their media kit. And so they sent me their media kit and it was all blue. And I said, mm, Asians love red because red's the color of celebration and red's the color of money uh, and prosperity. So I went to elance.com, paid someone $10 to rip off the media kit, make it all in red <laughs> and change it into Asian parent, Asian parent and put in my own data and statistics. So I sent over the media kit and the rate card, which was pretty much one quarter the price of what they were charging. Took the flight, landed in Singapore, had the meeting and um, sold my first contract. It took us about two and a half years to become number, the number one parenting destination in Singapore. We only have 38,000 babies born every year in Singapore. So we decided that we had to get into Malaysia and possibly Thailand. And in order to do so, I needed some form of capital infusion. We registered the business in Thailand. We registered the business in Malaysia. And within six months, it was doing well. And I knew that that was the time when I should go out for fundraising. Our first fundraise was in Singapore. It was a group of uh, angel investors who were all fathers and they saw our traction in Singapore and they saw that we were starting to become popular in Thailand and Malaysia as well. And then about 12 months later, I took another proper fundraise and this time around I took it from Vertex Ventures. So we raised another three odd million and then soon enough we raised a Series B round. So in total we've raised closer to uh, somewhere between eight to 10 million. I think that the biggest lesson I've learned is just how to manage teams and handle people. And then I also realized that the different Asian cultures operated very differently. So the way you work with an Indonesian is quite different from the way you would work with a Thai person or a Singaporean or even a Caucasian. Today, we have a very diversified strategy and a very diversified portfolio. So we have um, quite a lot of content pieces, somewhere around 40, 40 odd thousand pieces of articles. We also publish lots of videos. 
We publish a lot of memes, a lot of quizzes, and we've also built out our own app. We didn't want to just be um, a content platform. We wanted to be a community. And in order to be a community, we knew that we had to leverage technology. So the first thing we started doing was invest in a tech team. Um, so today, around 15% of our workforce are engineers and our engineers are constantly building new tools and uh, new calculators that, uh, that Asian women would want to use. So for example, baby name generators, uh, you know, ovulation calculators, due date calculators, as well as creating a community platform because it's not just about passive consumption of content, but it's about creating a lot of user-generated content as well as interactive content. It's a mixture of Reddit, Quora, Instagram, Facebook, as well as an article reader. So we've done all of these changes in these last few years because it's clear that not just our readers changes changing and the uh, consumption behavior of the audience changing, we've also realized that advertisers expect a lot more from you. Year on year, we've grown 25%. By the end of the year, we would expect our revenues to be at least anywhere from 30 to 50% more than last year. We also expect our users to double in size. So um, last year, we were somewhere around 10 to 12 million per month. This year, we're expecting anywhere from 18 to 25 million. But revenue and users are not correlated because we're not selling advertising. So as a company, we focus a lot on content marketing. We focus a lot on insights. We have a huge market research department that provides lots and lots of insights on mom behaviors across the different Asian markets. So for example, in a market like Indonesia, she switches diapers around, or she starts potty training her kids at around 18 months. Whereas in Singapore, you start potty training your kids somewhere around two years, two months. And in Malaysia, it's two years, six months. So we have all of these insights and data, which we package up and we sell uh, to clients anonymously so that they are able to come up with better marketing strategies across the different Asian markets. There were some markets last year where 60% of our traffic was coming in from Facebook, which was very scary, but it was giving us a lot of traffic and it, it felt good, right? Because we were hitting all of those numbers and, and um, nobody was really focusing on it until Facebook decided to change some of its algorithms. And overnight, suddenly in Sri Lanka, people were, there was a new feed on Facebook, which, so they had their normal feed where you would see content from friends and families. And then you had an alternate tab, which had content from pages when they made that switch. So they only tested it out in three or four countries. Our traffic in Sri Lanka dropped by 40% overnight. That was a little bit of a warning bell for me that as a publisher, we were relying way too much on social media. So we were relying way too much on other platforms to send us traffic. So in the last uh, six months, we actually have gone on a extremely um, crazy strategy on making sure we don't rely on social media. So the internal target is that uh, Facebook should only be sending us 20% of our traffic. We've been relying a lot on uh, re-SEOing some of our content, focusing on Bing, focusing on Yahoo, not just Google. And we've also been building up our newsletter database. So in the last six months, we've grown our newsletter database by 10x uh, by putting in some strategies on trying to collect uh, people's date due of their kids as well as um, just their email address, the telephone numbers, so that we can send them push notifications as well. We've also gone very big on our app. So while a lot of media companies have decided to boycott the app and, and say that, hey, you know what, it's too expensive to get an app downloaded and trying to retain a user on the app, uh, we've gone completely different and we've put in a lot of effort and focus on redeveloping our app and making sure that it's a sticky destination. What would be quite surprising, I think, for a lot of uh, the viewers as well as media companies is that most of our revenue does not come from display advertising. So we have content marketing, we also have videos, so we create a lot of white label video content for people to use, whether it's on their own site or on our site. We have a KOL offering. We build these KOLs ourselves. So we try not to just find uh, A-type celebrities, but we find people who we believe have an authentic voice and a message to share. We have our programmatic offering and third-party revenue. And of course, now we've started going into data. As a company, we're really excited because at the end of the day, it's it's generally a lot more fun to be in an industry that's that's crazy and chaotic and in crisis mode because if you do well, it's even more spectacular. If it wasn't in a crisis mode, it wouldn't be so exciting for us. We want to be the leading Southeast Asian digital media company, and we believe that we have the chops to get there.